Good afternoon, my name is Mark Lucas and I'm here to present to you the Autonomous Systems at Project Azul, which is a project located in Brazil. The project leader for this activity is Francisco dos Santos, who is based in Brazil and was unfortunately unable to attend the showcase. Before going any further, I will first of all present CLS and the CLS Group, which you may not know. CLS is a subsidiary of the French Space Agency, that is the CNES, and was created in 1986 to operate the Argos collection and localization system. CLS provides satellite-based services in five strategic fields, namely sustainable management of marine resources, environmental monitoring, maritime security, optimized management of land vehicles, and finally, monitoring services for the energy sector. To provide these services, CLS relies on three types of satellite system. There are first of all, location and data collection satellites for our telemetry services, and then Earth observation satellites and radar surveillance satellites for the oceanographic services. CLS is the unique operator of the Argos system and is also a provider of iridium telemetry dedicated to ocean platforms. So with two global low Earth orbit satellite systems, and three processing centers operational 24-7, CLS is a privileged partner for ocean observing programs. Indeed, we work with the Argo, DBCP, and Goose programs, as well as GCOMOPS, by providing telemetry and associated services. Central to all our activities is the issue of operationality. To this end, we have three data processing centers around the world, many backup systems, and operators monitoring all our systems 24-7. CLS has an international network of over 26 offices and subsidiaries spread around the world. It employs 750 personnel and has over 120 oceanographers, most of them based in France. However, we also have a strong contingent in the US, working within the Woods Hole Group, and also in Indonesia, where we deploy quite a few instruments. Finally, we have a very strong presence in Brazil, working with the oil and gas operators, deploying instruments and providing operational services. Right, so now that you know a bit more about CLS, I will now move on to the core part of the presentation, which is Projeto Azul. So Projeto Azul is an operational oceanography project in southeastern Brazil. It is sponsored by Shell Brazil within the prism of the Brazilian oil agency R&D Scope. We also have a partnership with the Rio de Janeiro University. The project itself is actually divided into two phases. The first phase started in 2013 and ended in 2016. It was focused on deploying an ocean observation system in the region. The second phase, which started in 2018 and will last until 2021, aims <clears throat> to set up an ocean operational system. So that means that on top of the ocean observation system that was previously deployed, we are adding an ocean forecast system with a gridded numerical model that includes an assimilation scheme. We are also adding an operational dashboard with a set of tools aimed at combining observations and forecast into useful information for field operations and decision making. So now, if we look at the map on the right hand side, we can see where the area of operation is located, just south of Rio de Janeiro in the vicinity of Cabo Frio. And on the left, you can see a close-up map showing the deployments that have taken place in Azul 1 and in Azul 2, the two phases of the project. 91 drifters, SVPs, have been deployed. Obviously, they're not all stay in the area. And 36 providers have also been launched. And you can also see that we've had 17 glider launches. These stayed at sea often for often up to two months. Finally, there has been one ASV campaign in Azul 2, as we are just starting to use ASV as a mean of collecting data. So on this slide and the next, I'm going to show you very briefly the principal assets that we have been using in this project. So first of all, the Sea Glider, which you probably already know, which is quite a big piece of kit. It has a body length of 1.8 meters and weighs 52 kilos. It can reach depth of 1,000 meters and is sufficiently small to be carried via a small vessel to its launch location, which is an advantage as it simplifies the logistics. The other autonomous vehicle we have been using is the Sailboy, which has a length of about 2 meters and weighs 60 kilograms. It has a maximum duration of operation of several months and has a typical speed of 1 to 3 knots. 
So here on this slide, we are showing you the type of data that can be collected in real time by these autonomous vehicles. And these enable a quick assessment of the now cast. So on the left hand side, we have an example of a glider section showing the navigation path, the surface currents and the depth average currents down to a depth of 1000 meters. And on the right hand side, we have the geostrophic velocity section computed from the left panel. So you can see some interesting velocity distributions in the area. And in Azul 2, in contrast to what was done in Azul 1, we are using this data in real time to feed the numerical models that are being used for forecast predictions over the region. So on the left hand side, you can see the free model results for a given day, the blue line showing you the drifted trajectories and the yellow line, the glider trajectories. You can see that there is some form of mismatch between what the drifting boys are experiencing, just south of Cabo Frio, and what the model is showing. On the right hand side, you can see that we can use information from the gliders and the drifting boys to position correctly the eddy that is present in the area. It has affected the trajectory of the drifting boys. So this is a very clear example of the benefits of incorporating the observational data in real time within the model, thus enabling the production of a better quality nowcast and forecast. And these improvements are made possible by the use of autonomous assets, which reduce the logistic issue and the overall cost. Projecto Azul is ongoing and should last until the end of 2021. The data is available for research on the website, the address of which is given on this slide. So you are invited to visit the website and find out for yourself what's happening in the project and its achievements so far. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.